Every month, Esme Maciels tends to the grave of the father she never knew, born just two months after his death. It's her way to honor him for losing his life at a protest against apartheid. Do you know why he went? I don't think it would have been noble of him to remain at home. You're proud of your father? Very. To this day, to this moment. On March 21, 1960, Zacchaeus Maciels joined 3,000 other black South Africans to protest one of the most hated restrictions against the nation's black majority, pass books, which controlled their every movement. Lydia Mahabuke remembers. Even if you had a visitor in your house, she said, you'd have to report them to the police station. They would tell you how long your visitor could stay. Sharpville's residents gathered peacefully in front of the police station without those passbooks. Their objective, to be arrested. But police opened fire, shooting protesters in the back as they ran for their lives. This was the first shot hit me. It hit you right here. Abram Mafoking still has a bullet lodged in his spine. What were you thinking? We were all in fear. There was no time to think, we were just trying to escape. In two minutes, police fired more than 1,300 bullets. 69 people lay dead in the streets. Johannes Sefatsa's brother was shot in the back as he ran. When I looked at his bed, his empty, his empty bed, he was not there. So it's then that I started crying. Police hauled away the bodies, fearing a funeral procession of 69 hearses would spark unrest. The government delivered those caskets in the beds of trucks. The coffins arrived closed. They never got to give us a, a chance to like, we have a, a last glimpse of those people. But they did not die in vain. Few knew in the days after the massacre, the outrage it ignited worldwide and the calls of condemnation against South Africa's racist regime. The Sharpville massacre also touched off three decades of protest in South Africa, ultimately leading to freedom for Nelson Mandela after 27 years in prison. He became South Africa's first black president in 1994 and signed the nation's new constitution in Sharpville. May Seals may have never known her father, but she does know his sacrifice paved the way to freedom for her daughter's generation. Michelle Miller, CBS News. Sharpville, South Africa.